Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwame Yasha Allah. Koholim la. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakahakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And that by the Spirit taught us his beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwaf that is out here sincerely. Keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Nawa. Just coming at you with another quick lesson and praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. Um, this is an article in the U.S. Sun, and I wanted to basically just go off into it to just show um, how those curses have overtaken us as a people. Because this is this is curse-like stuff right here. It says, Mom 26 charged after accidentally baking her one-month-old baby in the oven instead of putting her in the crib in Missouri. Now, I don't know how you make that kind of mistake. <laughs> you know, but we do know that um, the scripture talks about how the Lord created spirits for vengeance and the Lord. Hey, this is overall the Lord's work. You know, this is his doing, you know, um, and Christians to tell you that, you know, the Lord is good all the time and that Satan does these things. And but Satan is just an employee for the Lord. Satan gets his orders from the Lord and he goes forth and does what the Lord wants him to do. It's not. He's not making no decisions on his own. None of these demons or none of these spirits are making decisions on their own. They're all working under the, the guise of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? But this is definitely a part of the curses, man. It says a mother has been charged with the death of her one-month-old baby after she allegedly accidentally placed him in the oven instead of her crib. Mariah Thomas from Kansas City, Missouri, was charged with endangering the welfare of a child at the cops responded to reports of an unresponsive baby at the house on Friday afternoon. Yeah, boy. Goodness gracious. I don't know. I mean, again, hey, spirits of vengeance, man. Officers from the Kansas City Police Department arrived at the house around 1.30 p.m. After discovering Zariah May, who was declared dead at the scene, they launched an investigation given the circumstances of her death. The 26-year-old mother reportedly told officers at the scene that she was putting her baby down for a nap and accidentally placed her in the oven instead of, of the crib. That is the craziest shit. I mean, <laughs> that's some crazy. I mean, come on, bro. Just the, the sound of that. How do you... Uh, the kitchen is different from the bedroom. I mean, come on. The oven, you got to open the oven. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, in a crib, you're just sitting the baby over in the crib. So it's, it's suspect as hell. Anyway, according to an arrest warrant, Zariah was not breathing and had burn wounds. Her blackened clothing was melted onto her diaper. Thomas faces the class A felony of endangering the welfare of a child. So how did you, you know, what did you just start to smell something burning? As if you cooking something? And you know what, too? You know, um, there was a time period where, you know, um, you know, we, you know, hey, we was we was cooking our children as a people in certain situations, man. So that that right there could be symbolic as well. You know what I'm saying? Of what's to come as far as um, the famine that's going to hit this place, the hunger that's going to um, go down with people. It's going to be people that's actually going to be doing shit like this to actually really eat. You know, and that may sound foul, but this is the history of the Israelites. That's actually um, a part of the history of um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, which is the curses that we're under. And this is how you know we're the children of Israel, because those curses that's in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it explains us as a people to a T. No one else fits those curses, man. You can't tell me this is not um, curse work right here, man. This is curse work. OK, it says. We appreciate all first responders who worked this scene and the prosecutors who went to the scene in order to issue these charges. We acknowledge the gruesome nature of this tragedy and our hearts are weighed by the loss of the precious life. We trust the criminal justice system to respond appropriately. OK, OK, OK. Thomas Facebook account is full of loving pictures of the baby and depicts a dedicated and doty mother in a post on February 8th. Thomas shared a photo of Zariah asleep on a fleece blanket with the caption, twin, where have you been? Nobody knows me like you do, Zariah May. The caption featured numerous love hearts and kiss emojis. Um, following the mother's arrest, Facebook users have flooded the post with tributes to Zariah. It says, um, 
My goal this year for 2024 is to be the best mother I can be to my beautiful daughter and to stay out of drama and to get a place for me and my daughter and for only me and my daughter. She wrote in an older post. A friend of Thomas has spoken out about the mother's struggles, says Mariah had mental issues from what I know and didn't have the mindset of an adult. She thought like a child. OK, and that's a lot of women. Hell, it's women out here in their damn 70s that, 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 that think like children, man. The, the American women, they, they, they all think like, um, you know, overall, you know, <laughs> I ain't going to say all of them. But man, the majority of these motherfuckers, man, they, they just big ass kids, man. You know, it says um, numerous other social media posts from Thomas indicate that she was lonely following the birth of her daughter. And she says, ye motherfuckers claim they my friends, but don't never check up on me or Zariah. From now on, we fuck with whoever fuck with us or love us. I'm so tired of motherfuckers claiming my daughter and y'all pretending like just stop. OK, uh, yeah, OK. Thomas, who celebrated her birthday the day before her child's death, is being held in the Jackson County Desen Detention Center. Yeah, man, hey, that's some gruesome shit. I mean, and, and let's just get let's get the apocrypha real quick. Um, the spirits of vengeance. And I, I mean, you know, it just don't add up, you know, even if she's thinking as a child, you know, you know, um. I think that you would know the damn the, 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 the fucking oven from your from a crib. This shit just silly, man. This shit is silly. And I guess, you know, who knows? They'll probably find out some more information and, and um, you know, maybe some more stuff will come out on, on, on that story or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because if she of course, they're going to give her a mental test. You know, they're going to check for. And, and a lot of the times that don't work for the so-called black people, like how it works for Esau, the so-called white man. You know, because Esau, they saying it. I I was in my right, right, right uh, black race, man. You could forget about it. But this is Ecclesiasticus 39 and 28. It says there be spirits that are created for vengeance. So there was a spirit that 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 um, pushed her to do what she done and it wouldn't have been an, it wouldn't have been anything that she could have done to um to get out of it neither you know it says there be spirits that are created for vengeance which in their fury lay on sore strokes and the time of destruction appeased the wrath of him that made them so the lord created spirits to appease his wrath man and here's a few of them fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is, and when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So these spirits were glad to get that order to have her do what she done. To appease the wrath of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. These spirits weren't like, well, well, Lord, that's a gruesome. Oh, man, this is just, the baby only one month old. You're going to cook the baby? No, they're not, they not um, coming up against the Lord. And, and or, No, they, it says they rejoice in getting that commandment. So these, these spirits were rejoicing in doing that, right? And, and, and Satan has absolutely, like I said, again, he's not on his own. He's not out here just doing what he wants to do. He's a part of these spirits that the Lord created for vengeance. And they go forth when the Lord tell him to go forth and do what he wants to once done. It's that simple, man. But now. Let me go into the blue letter. Because these are these curses, man, that's that's um, plaguing us as a people, because the scripture does say um, they, they, that they will um, overtake us. In fact, let me see which one exactly. Yeah, they have all three here. But let, let me get um, verse... So you have a situation where, okay, so, so the contract was, was you had blessings for obedience. If we were obedient, we were blessed. We were above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Now, when you get to verse 15 right here, Deuteronomy 28 and 15, it says, but it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. See? 
Not only would it come upon us, but they will overtake us. When something, when something overtakes you, it means that it, it basically, it totally devours you. There's nothing you can, you know, you, you have no fight. You can't get out of it. In Deuteronomy 28 and 45, it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. See? And that's the reason why we, we're in a situation, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's the reason why we're in a situation that we're in as far as being at the lowest of the totem pole when it comes to, um, you know, we have no, no share in the earth. We, we have no, no, um, nothing in this planet. All the other nations are ruling over us. They have overtaken us. Those curses have overtaken us. And it even goes into, you know, the death of the children, man, you know, or just, just the, the, the gruesome ways that our people are um, passing away, man. That's a, gru that's a seriously gruesome way to go. You cook your damn baby. And it's supposedly be a mistake that you've done it? Man. This is Deuteronomy 28. And let me get... Yeah, these curses on us hard. Let me just get uh, verse 56 where it talks about the woman. It says, The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground, for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards her, the husband of her bosom, and towards her son, and towards her daughter. And towards her young one that cometh out from between her feet and towards her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates. See, that's why I mentioned, you know, I, I was just saying that it's symbolic that, you know, she actually put the baby in the oven because there's going to come a point. There was a time when we was actually, you know, um, um, you know, cooking our children because there was no food. And it's going to come a time where things are going to get so bad that this is going to be a thing back on the earth again. And see, people, they, they, they can't fathom that because of all the food that's around them right now. You know, your refrigerator is full. Your damn cabinets is full. You know what I'm saying? Even with this inflation and, and as high as things are, it's, it's people that are still wasting food. You know, throwing plates of food away. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, I'm not, not you know, um, I don't eat leftovers. You know what I'm saying? All this bullshit, <laughs> you know, we're wasting food. See, people are wasting food now because you can go to a vending machine. You can eat. You can go to Dollar Tree and get a whole goddamn meal now. You see? You can drive through a drive through You can get some McDonald's. You can get some Wendy's. See, this is the reason why people can't fathom that. Eating kids. Eating kids. See, people can't fathom, you know, eating, eating their damn pet cat or eating their pet dog, reaching over into the aquarium and, and, and frying a pet fish. Because it's going to come a point where it's not going to be anything out here. You know, hey, there, there's been famines where recently, recently in, in, in this day and time, um, in certain countries where the people eat up all the grass, they climb up in the trees, they eat all the leaves, you know, they, they you know, they, um, and, and, and once all that's gone, it's cannibalism going on, man. You see? And that's just, you know, that's just something that, I, you know, that, that came up in the spirit because it's, it's, it's really kind of spiritual, symbolic wise, you know, that she actually put the baby in the oven like that. You see what I'm saying? But still at the same time, too, you have to understand that this is a great curse upon our people, man, where, you know, and they don't tell them what, 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 what she done or even that baby done in their past life, you know, because reincarnation is in the scriptures, you know, whether you want to accept it or not. It's in the scriptures. And let me get this, too. Because, you, you know, some a person, there's no one innocent on this planet. Job 4 and 7, it says, remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent or were or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity, so and so wickedness reap the same. See, there's no one that's on this planet, man, that's um, that's innocent. Not even as soon as you come into this world as a, as a, a newborn. You're not innocent, man, because the scriptures talks about reincarnation, how, you know, judgment is under the sun and how your spirit goes back to the to the Lord that gave it when you pass away. See, Christianity, they teaching people that there's this fiery place under the earth, you know, and there's this hell, you know, and people are going there to burn forever if you were bad and you go into the clouds if you were good, you know, to heaven. And that's not in the Bible, man. That's a that's a um, a, a 
uh, you know, one of those fables, man. The scriptures talks about um, beware of um, um, old wives tales and fables. That shit is not in the scriptures. The Bible says that, you know, matter of fact, let me just get it. What is it? I think it's in um, Ecclesiastes 3 and, 3 and 12. Let me see here, though. No, it's Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, Salakia. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. So basically when you die, you, you know, of course you turn back to dust. Your body is just, you know, overall just, you know, it, it's just a vessel for your spirit. It says, and the spirit shall return unto Yahweh who gave it. That's where your spirit goes. You see, even in the example of if you're familiar with the, the, the story with um, Saul and, um, you know, he went to the uh, the witch lady or whatever, or the um, uh, she she, you know, he was trying to um, call Saul from the spirit world and and and. and, and she called, uh, I think they're called mediums or whatever, you know what I'm saying, in that particular situation. But, you know, she ended up calling um, uh, Samuel back from the spirit world or whatever. And, you know, he was trying to get information, you know, because he wasn't hearing from the Lord. And Saul told him, like, hey, you're going you gonna to die. Your ass going to be with me tomorrow. And even though the Lord placed an evil spirit on Saul, all those things that Saul had done, you know what I'm saying? It didn't say nothing about him going to hell. You know what I'm saying? He went back to the spirit world. His spirit went back before the Lord, man. There's no such thing as this, this place underground where people are burning. You won't find that in the scriptures nowhere. And no one is innocent when they come here. And like I said, again, you know, the scriptures talks about how judgment is under the sun. Let me get that. Ecclesiastes 3 and 16, it says, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Where is the place under the sun? It's the earth. <laughs> you see that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there see so you know hey this is a very gruesome death but let me let me also get this as well it just showed it hey this the lord man the lord is getting down out here then satan if these people giving satan all the damn credit and, and when it's the lord getting down out here man deuteronomy 32 and 39 it says see now that i even i am he and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See that? I also like to get this one in 1 Samuel 2. Um, Salakia, 1 Samuel chapter 2. In verse 6. It says, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. See? Everybody's situation has to do with the Lord. So if you're rich, the Lord made you rich. If you're poor, the Lord made you poor. If you're hungry, the Lord made your ass hungry. <laughs> you know, if you, you know, you, you know, you're six foot five, the Lord made you six foot five. If you're four foot two, the Lord made you four foot two. If you're blind, he created you as blind person. You know, if you're deaf, he, he, he made it that way. And that's the goes off into Exodus um, chapter four. In verse 11, where the Lord was talking, talking to Moses. Let's get that. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 11. And I'm just going to get straight to the point. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? See, the Lord created all those all, all, um, people the way that they are. You see that? As a matter of fact, the scripture talks about how the... Um, the deceived and the deceiver are his. Job 12 and 16. It says with him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. <laughs> See? Matter of fact, uh, it's, uh, what's that one? Um, I'm trying to think. Is it Proverbs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Proverbs 16 and 4. It says, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. See that? But when you go to when you go to church and, and you hear these pastors um screaming on, you know, and shouting and, and organ playing and all that shit, they don't tell you none of these things, man. They're not um, bringing out the scriptures. That's the reason why a, a, a lot of these people are so damn dumbfounded. The, the, the worst people in the world, pretty much, is overall people that believe in white Jesus. 
which is a damn lie, you know? <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to touch on this, man. Yeah, very gruesome way to go. Very gruesome way to go. And I, I, I just can't really, I can't, I can't see. Now, man's goings of the Lord. I can't see you making that kind of mistake. How do you not know a damn oven from a crib? That shit is stupid as hell, isn't it? And she more than likely done this on purpose, man. I, that's the only way. I, I can't see it no other way. Spirit came upon her ass. She was probably trying to be spiteful towards the baby daddy or just got tired of the whole situation. Who knows, man? But uh, come on, you, you're not making those types of mistakes. You're not making those types of mistakes. I bet you uh, she probably used the oven the night before. Her birthday was the day before. She probably fucking slid a pizza or something in that bitch. Made some lasagna or something. You don't know the oven from, you don't know. Come on. And then you had to cut that bitch on. It's not like, okay, I slid the baby in the oven by mistake, which is stupid as hell. But you had to turn that bitch on. I don't know. No ovens where you, you, uh, you know, when you push the door closed, they automatically fire up. Come on, bro. So this this bitch right here, this is just some wickedness that she done. I, I can't see it no other way. <laughs> and they gonna give her that business too, man. So with that, hey, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Shalom.